Thank you very much, <clears throat> and thank you for the invitation to come and speak. Um, I wasn't really intending to talk about this topic, but uh, Peter Tregilgus thought the uh, title was so provocative when I wrote it on the blog piece that he asked me to uh, perhaps talk to this topic. What I'd like to do today is simply talk about a, um, one concept, one idea from one man, and what that then means for our understanding of regional leadership at both the national level and also in each region and each person's organisation and in their day-to-day -day activity. Could I move on to the next slide, please? Thank you. So the idea that I'm going to discuss comes from a gentleman called uh, Roger Stow, who's an economist at George Mason University in Washington. And Roger's actually a friend of mine, but one of the things that is remarkable about Roger is that he's a prolific author. He's written many books on regional development, nationally in the US, but also many international works. And one of his passions over recent years has been to examine regional leadership as a concept and as something that becomes enacted in certain places. In particular, he has focused upon places that have experienced what he calls a shock. That is, places where there has been a remarkable downturn in terms of their economic fortunes and how they responded. So what would qualify as a shock? The closure of a major mine, the closure of a major business enterprise like, like a, a car manufacturing plant. And so his concern has really been about trying to understand what happened, how they responded and what the outcomes have been and being an economist, wherever possible, he has tried to focus upon modelling that and coming to some fairly broad-ranging conclusions about... Thank you very much. One clicker. That's technology. Um, now I've lost my train of thought. And, and he's uh, focused upon a range of uh, studies looking at uh, regional leadership. Now, Roger actually is a leading scholar in the field and has made an important contribution, particularly in the US, to the field of regional leadership studies. So, Roger, having undertaken many, many studies and written a number of books about the topic, comes to three key conclusions. And I apologise if some of the language he uses is actually academic, because he is an academic. So his first con conclusion is that once endogenous factors are controlled for, regional economic performance is dependent upon leadership and resource endowments. So, what are endogenous factors? Endogenous factors are the things already within a region. So an endogenous factor might be things such as the industry structure. If a place is rich in an industry that's likely to grow nationally, that region grows nationally. It's one of the internal factors. Or if a place is rich in human capital, that is, it has a highly skilled and highly trained workforce, that is an endogenous factor. His essential insight is, however, that controlling for these other factors, what causes some regions to grow and some regions not to grow are, the two, are these two things. The quality of the regional leadership and the quality and quantity of the resource endowments. And by resource endowments, what he means is things such as access to water, access to, to mineral resources, access to forests, and other things that can be turned into to value within the economy. And critically, of course, as he observes, only the former is amenable to action to enhance achievement. You can't actually invent a mine. You can't invent a river. You can't create these things usually. So the first thing he concludes really is that regional leadership really is important and when push comes to shove, it's one of the few things you can actually do much about in terms of getting your region to grow relative to its previous trajectory. The second conclusion he makes is that leadership is enhanced when it has access to superior information both now and into the future, which is critical of course. Obviously, in our day-to-day -day lives, in our working lives, we all make better decisions when we have better information. In a presentation I gave yesterday, I made brief reference to um, the BBC special on the assassination of Osama bin Laden. 
And I pointed out both that there was a strategic leadership element to that, but also one of the key issues was that they took a lot of time to acquire the right information. Even then they had to make a judgment, but that decision, that leadership that was expressed by the President of the United States was actually informed by the best information they could gather. So information is clearly key. The third point, and the one that goes to the uh, core of my presentation today, is that he noted the importance of slack resources in enabling leadership both to develop and find purposeful expression. What does he mean by slack resources? Well, slack resources aren't the people who just hang around the beaches and don't do much and uh, spend a lot of time in the pub. What he means are unused or utilised resources or skills in the community. So it could include business resources and business leaders who are not fully deployed, who may be part -time, working part-time, or whose businesses are mature and able to spare time, or it could also include community groups. The important point is that his conclusion was that regions that responded better had more of these leaders that had time on their hands to be able to devote to the challenge at hand of finding growth. So effective leaders need to have the capacity, the available time, the fiscal resources, etc., to attend to the community leadership tasks to hand. So having the resources, having the time to do it is important. Because quite importantly, leadership comes at a cost. And I thought it's particularly apposite that uh, with Barack Obama's visit here, we have an image of uh, Barack Obama in the, white, in the Oval Office. One of the things we have to acknowledge is that leadership does come at a cost to individuals and comes at a cost to, lead to organisations. Research suggests, and particularly some of the research Mark Hu has undertaken, is that it's the quality of leadership that matters, not the quantity. So it's not necessarily how many people are involved in things, but it may be the quality of the people and the quality of decisions and the quality of influence they're able to exert that is really critical. Leadership comes at a cost at a regional level to individuals in a number of ways. So there's a financial cost, of course. Time away from a business or a place of employment is a cost to that leader. There's often a political cost. The regional leader who says no minister or no mayor pays a political cost for their leadership role 